Hi, I'm Vikram and welcome back to a roll of film. Very often in vintage cameras, we have this problem in which the light meter or the exposure meter doesn't work due to age and various other reasons. Also, a lot of these uh, iconic uh, vintage cameras do not have a light meter. And for a lot of people who are dependent on light meters to read the light, this poses a challenge. Especially for people from the digital age who, are, who take light meters for granted, unlike a lot of us who learned our photography without the help of a light meter. So how do we calculate our exposures? How do we read the light? This is an art that has been, well, quite, not forgotten, I wouldn't say forgotten, but not, uh, it's not very common or not many people know how to do it. Well, I have some good news. It is not as easy, it's not as difficult as it sounds. So we have here what is known as the Sunny 16 rule. It is a, basically a guideline which will help us, uh, help you in, in being able to judge the light and to set your exposures uh, by using this guideline. Now, like all guidelines and all rules, these are just uh, broad strokes. Uh, it is only with practice that you'll really be able to fine tune this art. So let's have a look here. So what exactly is Sunny 16? So first, let us start with our variables. The first variable, of course, is the ASA or the ISO as it is now known. Uh, and this will be fixed because we are using film, remember. So the, you cannot change your film. So the ASA will be fixed. The next, you have your shutter speed. You have your aperture value. And then you have uh, what I call the weather and the shadow detail. So we have basically one, two, three, four, five. Five variables of which one is fixed. So here we have the ESAs or the ISOs and I have listed just four of them, standard four ISOs in which film is available. That is 100, 200, 400 and 800. Now these are classic uh, one-stop uh, differences in which, which when, I mean, when I say one-stop what I mean is that uh, uh, 200 ISO is or 200 ASO is twice as uh, as sensitive as 100 and 400 is twice as sensitive as 200 and 800 is twice as sensitive as 400. So this is the basic uh, one-stop difference. Then we have our shutter speeds. These are the fixed shutter speeds mostly found found in uh, vintage cameras. Again, they have uh, a one-stop difference. You have 125, you have the 250, 500 and 1000. These are the four standard, of course they're, they're slower shutter speeds like 60, 30, and then this goes on to 2000, etc. But this is the basic, four basic uh, shutter speeds and this is what, uh, if we, once we familiarize ourselves with this, uh, we can uh, take, uh, we can calculate based on this for the rest of uh, the shutter speeds. Similarly, we have the uh, aperture settings, you have the 16, 11, 8, 5.6 and 4. So what? So the first step, of course, is the ASA. Now we know what film we have, uh, what kind of film we are going to load into the camera. That is a given. So, so for example, if I have say a 200 ASA film. So what do I do now? So the first thing I do is set my shutter speed. So if I am shooting 200 ASA, what I do is I choose the shutter speed that is the closest, nearest to my ASA. So if it is 200, then the shutter speed will be 250. If it is 400, the closest will be five, 500 and not 250. Why? Because 500 is just 100 difference between 100, 400 and 500, so I choose 500. 250 of course is more than, the difference is more than 100, so I will not choose that. So I will choose the nearest, which is 500. Similarly for 800, I will choose 1000. And 100 or 125. Now we look at the weather. Two things when it comes to weather. We look at the weather and we look at the shutter. So if I am shooting in, say if I am shooting uh, 200 ASA, I, shoot, I have 200 ASA, I first choose my shutter speed, which is 250. Now I look at the weather. If I am in bright sunny weather with very distinct shadows, 
I choose an aperture value of 60. So let me say it again, 200 ASA, 250 shutter speed, bright sun, distinct shadows, 60. We are using 400, then it will be 400 ASA, 500 shutter speed, bright sun, distinct shadows, 60. Similarly for the rest. Now if the weather is sunny with slight cloud and you have shadows but with the soft edges, not very distinct shadows, then I use 60. I go for a 60. Uh, using the same formula, if I go, if they are, if it is slightly overcast and you have barely, uh, very, very, very soft shadows, barely there, barely visible, you choose the aperture value of 8. If it is highly overcast and you have absolutely no shadow, 5.6 and if you are in, in the shade, uh, your subject is in the shade or you are in the, in the shade and, if, and at the time of the sunset obviously there will be no shadows you use the shutter, uh, aperture value of 4. So it's a very simple method in which, uh, which is it is basically a shutter priority method in the sense that you first choose the shutter speed and then use the then depending upon the weather and the shadow detail you choose your aperture value now of course uh, these are all one stop differences so you can calculate uh, using your knowledge of one stop and make various adjustments if you want a shut uh, faster shutter speed then you adjust your aperture uh, accordingly if you want if you want uh, slightly uh, you want a larger aperture aperture to get some uh, bouquet and you want to get some autofocus background then you accordingly adjust your shutter speed. So like I said, this is just a guideline and, uh, and you can use this as a, as a reference and the only way to really, really uh, get to know or to crack this is to go out and shoot and practice. Well, I hope you find this uh, interesting and useful. If you do, kindly please uh, like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you and see you next time.